Good morning and welcome to the uh, meeting of the Burbank Glendale Pasadena Airport Commission. Thank you all for coming. Would you can we do a roll call, please? Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Adams. Here. Commissioner Garpedian. Commissioner Sinanian. Commissioner Tornick. Here. Commissioner Devine. Here. <coughs> Commissioner Madison. Here. Commissioner Wiggins. Here. Commissioner Selvage. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Could you all rise and we'll pledge allegiance to the flag, please? <clears throat> Place your hand over your heart and repeat with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Do, um, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Public comment. Do we have any public comment? Yes, we do. First, we have Eric Allen. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm a Studio City resident, and my wife and I bought our dream home, our rolled home in 2003 and we loved it until two years ago we were suddenly being bombarded by airplanes strafing over our house non-stop they start at 5 15 in the morning and at seven o'clock they kick into every minute or every two minutes right above our house we bought our house backed onto the santa monica forest it's beautiful quiet and we bought it for the quiet and the cleanliness and and now the FAA is throwing airplanes over our house and destroying our peace and quiet and dropping toxic fumes on my children and my wife and myself yesterday my wife was like we might have to move but we can't move anywhere we won't be able to sell our house for what it's worth because now we have to reveal that there are airplanes over our house every two minutes. So I would really like you to do something about this, urge the FAA to reroute this. All right, I think I've said my piece. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sue Ellen Wagner. Good morning. On May 16th, the LAWA BOAC disclosed that the FAA is actively working toward resolving a flight path issue pertaining to a departure procedure, including Waypoint Perry, implemented in May 2018 at Van Nuys Airport. The FAA has developed six different options plus a hybrid option that would combine elements of three of the other options. The senior leadership in FAA's Flight Standards Service is currently reviewing the hybrid option. It is expected that the FAA will provide feedback on the hybrid option within weeks. This speedy effort to rush through a change at Van Nuys Airport without consideration of the longer standing and more severe impacts of Burbank Airport on our communities, 200 departing jets a day on average, jeopardizes all efforts for community-wide solution. In fact, it's likely that any solution for Van Nuys Airport alone will leave fewer good options for the larger problem at Burbank Airport. Perhaps this is the intent to make it impossible to move the path from Burbank Airport that is severely impacting our communities and parklands. Expedited action only at Van Nuys Airport while we wait and endure years of pain from your airport is simply not fair. Perhaps you have had the same contact with the FAA and you are planning to tell us about today. We know you have met with them since the last commissioner's meeting. We would like a full report and we renew our repeated requests that you put community impacts on every agenda in the interest of transparency, 
you must discuss this issue in public, and progress must be reported as it unfolds and is disclosed. <coughs> we want updates at every meeting. Where is our quick fix and creative solution? Where is our hybrid option? Is the FAA planning to update you in a couple of weeks as well? Are you going to tell us about it? Our representatives demanded and were assured that this would be a community-wide resolution involving both airports. Please provide us with the information confirming that. We would like these answers from you now at this meeting. Thank you. Kimberly Turner. Good morning. To dovetail on uh, Kimberly Turner, Studio City for Quiet Skies. To dovetail on what my co-founder has uh, just told you about, uh, we wanted to tell you a little bit more about what happened at the Laua meeting. Uh, we, we watched it online as it, as it was happening. We have a full transcript here of what happened at the Laua meeting. We have a, their status update. We have not quite full, but fairly full, fairly full transcript of, of what happened. But I'll, I'll read a few excerpts right now um, of the few things that they said during the meeting. The FAA is again reviewing this hybrid option, and they're expecting to provide feedback in the next couple of weeks. If flight, if flight standards are supportive, then it would have to go through proce procedure modification process. We will let you know if that's the case. If the flight standards service raises concerns about this hybrid option, they will come back to us and let us know what other next steps might be available. Right now, we are really in constant contact with the FAA. They have been really good about keeping us up to speed. Really, every step of the way, all the things they are doing, what the reactions have been, trying to be creative in coming up with solutions. We are, so we are optimistic. As we continue to work, they are taking us seriously and trying to really work with us. So in terms of safety, has the FAA uh, this was a question from one of the commissioners. In terms of safety, has the FAA made aware of, been made aware of the fact that most of these planes appear to be flying over the Santa Monica Mountains, of which 90% has been identified as a fire hazard, so that if any fuel or any plane would crash there, we would have a very big adverse impact? Is that something that they have made, been made aware of? And the answer was FAA is aware. But what we are again advocating for is that they are creative in finding options that would not normally create itself. And the work that we've been doing, work that the board, collective officials have been doing, I think is having an effect. And we are seeing them bring back creativity to find some issues to mitigate this. And the board said, this is fantastic. That's really good news. Um, Lao is an example of what an effective BOAC and airport operator can do. They're not saying, oh, we've done everything we can. They're looking for creative solutions, and they want to find a solution. Um, we really expect the same of you. We expect a solution. Uh, the South San Fernando Valley and the Santa Monica Mountain Protected Parkland and High Fire Severity Zone have been hammered uh, with 200 flights a day uh, for years now, for two years. You have had enough time. And clearly, the FAA can work fast when it wants to. Um, we need to find a solution. Time is of the essence. They are coming up with a solution in, in a, a couple of weeks' time or feedback on their solution. Um, please, we would really like some transparency and would like you guys to let us know what's going on with the FAA and these, and these um, possible solutions. We, we at least deserve transparency. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lisa Carlos. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, much of what I was going to say was stated uh, way more eloquently by the two first speakers. But um, <clears throat> essentially, this new hybrid fix that you've just heard about, maybe for the first time, <laughs> has the potential to solidify our problems with the Burbank departure paths. 
Um, and we want to reiterate that our community suffering must be addressed holistically. The FAA's position is that the airspace in the San Fernando Valley is limited, complex, and interrelated. This demonstrates that the risk of a one-off solution is huge to those of us who are suffering from the Burbank Airport. For communities like Studio City, Sherman Oaks, Toluca Lake, Beverly Hills, and Bel Air, who are being bombarded primarily by the Burbank air uh, flight paths, the segmented approach by the FAA is unacceptable. Um, this commission has continued to question whether there's even a problem. Um, the LAWA officials, on the other hand, have been responsive, respectful, and even sympathetic. Um, we truly believe that your unwillingness to act or to engage in a meaningful way with the FAA is jeopardizing our family's health, our sanity, our sleep, and our way of life, not to mention our property values. Um, and I, you know, we all know that you are, <clears throat> you're in the midst of a fraught uh, terminal replacement um, effort. And the truth is right now you have a bad PR problem. Um, your lack of transparency with this issue, um, backdoor dealing and outright lies to the public um, mean that for those of us who live in the valley, and there's a lot of us, you're the bad guys. Uh, the, first, the first meeting that I went to that you posted, I thought, hey, they're listening, they're sympathetic, they hear us. But hearing is one thing, and um, inaction is actually what it's turned into. Um, anyway, we, um, we demand that Burbank Airport officials and the Bur Burbank Airport commissioners, um, who currently refuse to acknowledge that there's even a problem, uh, make, make an effort, actively engage with the FAA, and find a solution which incorporates the Van Nuys solution. Um, and just for the record, I'm with Uproar LA. Uh, we have 1,200 active members, and we have a, a pretty hefty legal fund. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm really speaking on behalf of my neighbors. Um, my, I mean, I, because we're now fairly public, our organizations, we get phone calls, we get letters. We have people who are um, literally having psychological problems because, I mean, you, you saw the first speaker, he's upset. There are tens of thousands of people who feel like he does. Uh, we have um, elderly people who, uh, my mother's had to up her blood, her blood pressure medication. Um, we have people who've lived in their homes for 40 years who can no longer enjoy their gardens. Um, we have newborn babies who can't sleep. Um, we have, um, I mean, I could go on and on. The, we have sophisticated equipment that's measuring the amount of particulates that's being dumped on, for example, Carpenter Community Charter Elementary School. And it is heinous. It's really unacceptable. Um, so please um, work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Stacy Slichta. Hi everyone. How are you doing this morning? Do you all get a good night's sleep? <coughs> well, you live in Glendale, Pasadena, and Burbank. So of course you got a good night's sleep. And I also was watching many of you while my other um, fellow <coughs> residents of Studio City were speaking. And I'm all about being engaged, looking at people when they are speaking, when they're speaking with you. And I think it's important that body language really shows where you're at as a board. I spoke at the Law Law meeting. I got eye contact. I got people that were concerned. I got responses. And I'm really disappointed in the way that the Burbank Airport has responded to the communities. And I'm going to read something that is on your website about your communities. Being a good neighbor to the communities surrounding the airport has been a priority for more than three decades by working with local schools, civil and community groups, and elected officials, as well as local businesses and residents. The airport has reached out in many ways to improve the quality of life of families and individuals who live and work near the airport. 
I think this needs to be, there needs to be some footnotes on this statement that you have. Because when you say communities, you mean your community. You mean Pasadena, Glendale, and Burbank. You don't mean anything outside of those walls. You mean within your community, not Studio City, Toluca Lake, or any place else that the airports fly, airplanes fly over. It's just within those walls. When you say community groups, it's not the community groups that have come here and spoken with you time and time again. You have, some of you have responded and said, there is a problem, but some of you still believe there is no problem. You get a good night's sleep. You've been living here for 50, 60 years, and it's quiet near your house, but you don't look outside those walls. You're, you're segregating yourself. You're segregating your community to other communities, which is painful to watch. California is a beautiful state. We're all good neighbors. You're not good neighbors right now. You're not good neighbors to anything outside of those walls. You also say elected officials. Our elected officials have been working very hard with us to try to come up with a solution, giving us feedback. We haven't gotten any feedback from you. We've sent you information. One of the um, commissioners that we've sent information to multiple times uh, at his request, did we get a response? A, an email saying thank you so much for, for sending the information that we requested, taking time out of your day for something we asked for. Did we get a response? No. Once again, crickets. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We, I sat here and spoke with you before about the community and about Carpenter Community Charter, and several of you had said, well, there's many, many schools. It's, it, there's a lot of other schools. What about the other schools? Well, there is a lot of other schools, and LAUSD is on board. They've given notice to the FAA that they're watching what's happening. What did we get from you guys from that? Again, crickets, nothing, absolutely nothing. And I'm not, and I'm not even engaged with some of you right now. You're looking in other directions. It's common courtesy and respect. I respect your position. I, I only expect the same in return. If you don't care about the problem, respond to an email and say, this isn't about us. We're in our walls. We're in Burbank, we're in Pasadena, we're in Glendale, and we're happy. All of the noise monitors are in our jurisdiction, and they haven't changed that much. Why not put a noise monitor in, in Studio City or Toluca Lake, because you know what will happen? They'll go off the Richter scale, and you'll see what we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. You so I implore minute. you, I implore you, make a decision, make a stand, put your big boy pants on and your big girl pants on and say, you know what? We only care about Burbank, Glendale, and Pasadena. Anything outside of that is your problem, not ours. I'll respect that, but the non-response is disrespectful and I'm sorry, quite rude. Thank you so much for your time. Stephanie Bio. Stephen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Studio City. Um, did not prepare anything, did not know I was going to speak. I thought I was coming to a meeting to address the concerns of my neighborhood in terms of this relentless flight patterns that have been happening over our properties. Um, it's, it's just mind-boggling to me how suddenly we have been just a, and excuse me, a shitload of flights have been dropped over our living areas unexpectedly. I don't know if there was any notification. I've, I've heard that there might have been notification. We had an opportunity to protest. I've never seen any notification. But it has gone from a peaceful, <coughs> quiet, um, serene location. And most of us, have spent our lifetime building to get to that point. I know I did. I've been in that area for 17 years. It took me that long to get to the spot I wanted to be and spend the rest of my life and raise a family. I just had a baby boy at my age. And um, 
I can't take them outside anymore. I'm afraid to take them outside, literally. And this is not an exaggeration. The constant pounding, the relentless flights over my house, the smell, it, I do not want to subject him to any of that kind of stuff. And I just don't know how this is happening in this country, let alone in our little neighborhood. I hear this next gen is, is inundating and, and, and it's, it's throughout the country. But how is it possible that we can just drop basically an airport on top of where we live? It's not even like it's you know up that high. It's right over our houses. My house literally rocks at times. I mean, I can't even sleep at night. We had a meeting the other night in Studio City at some school. Literally, we had to stop every 30 seconds to let the flight go over right, right across the street, in a school right across the street from another school. This is going on constantly all day. I went to a meeting where some of you people were at, I remember you, and you said you were on our side. You said that you, <coughs> you are going to address the FAA. It's about the FAA, right? It's, we're, we're on your side. But I don't feel like that is really happening. I don't know where you guys are all coming from. I don't know what the bottom line is. The bottom line for us is that we are not living life that w the way we should be. This is something that I've never experienced my entire lifetime. I've lived in big cities. I lived in New York City. I've lived everywhere, LA. I've never seen this before to drop this amount of planes on top of a community that wasn't expecting and never experienced and brought there for the specific reason of not having to deal with this stuff is mind boggling. I don't know how this happened. We are so upset over it. I had a friend that's a real estate guy. He's a, he's a realtor. He sold the property in Studio City to people that did not know what was going on. They, they didn't do their due diligence. He is being sued right now by those people because they said it was not disclosed. This is going to happen constantly. Our, our home values have gone to the basement. Um, our life has gone to, to, to ruins, literally. I, there was a guy the other night that basically said that his life is ruined. And it is. We can't go outside of our house. I watch TV, and, and I've got to turn the volume way up because I can't hear the TV. So it's like this. It's like this. You hear that sound? That's over my house. So this is not a little issue. I don't know what to do. We're fighting a fight. We have good people on our side. But it seems like it's, it's, it's we're fighting a losing battle. You have one minute. So we, we come to you. I come here today to ask you to be in our shoes. Come, come hang out. I invite you to my house. Come hang out with me one night, one day, one morning, 5.30 in the morning. I have a little baby's in his crib. He can't sleep because we got planes over our head. It's serious. It's a crisis. Something <clears throat> needs to be done. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Consent, Kelly. Are there any comments by any commissioners? Um, I have a, a couple of uh, uh, questions. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the... Um, the hybrid option. I don't know that I'm familiar with that. Uh, it's obvious from the speakers that LA, uh, LAX is getting uh, kind of more feedback and more cooperation from the FAA than we are. And, and that's troublesome to me. I don't, you know, um, just from hearing what uh, was said at their meeting. So um, the hybrid option. And um, also I wanted to ask about the round table and if there's any information that you can give us about the round table that uh, we are, um, that the airports are supposedly um, getting together, organizing. Commissioner, uh, I would prefer to wait until after we've had an opportunity to discuss this with you and uh, we, we will, uh, be doing that today but we have been in discussions with the FAA we have been in discussions with Van Nuys we have been in discussions with LAX about a, a round table but we will be re reporting that to you okay so so we're kind of we will be re reporting that to you Commissioner, Commissioner okay thank you All right. and the hybrid option do we know I'll have to, 
To be honest, this is the first I've heard of a hybrid option. We will look into that and see exactly what uh, they that they are referring to. And and why would why would why would the FAA consider an an option or or offering LA an option like this, a hybrid option, and not work with us on that sort of? Until we have had a chance to talk to the FAA, I really can't speculate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> Thank you. Moving right along to um, the consent calendar. Do I hear an approval of the consent calendar? So Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Items for commission approval on six. Award extension of janitorial. Mr. DeFrenzi, your director of engineering and maintenance will make the presentation. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, based on the unanimous recommendation of the Operations and Development <laughs> Committee staff, I uh, comes to you today requesting authorization to award a short-term, month-to-month extension of our existing janitorial services agreement with DFS. On a month-to-month -month basis, um, at the current fixed monthly cost of $93,132, excluding supplies, which will continue to be billed a monthly approximately $16,700 um, per month. Uh, just a little background. In April 2014, DFS was awarded the janitorial services agreement with the airport after a competitive uh, bid and selection process. The initial term of the agreement was three years, and there were two one-year extension options, both of which were exercised, bringing the current expiration date um, to May 31st, 2019, the end of this current month. Um, considering that our existing contract was uh, about to expire in February of 2019, staff solicited uh, publicly bids from interested companies to provide janitorial services. Uh, in response to our publicly posted RFP, we received nine proposals. Um, two of the nine were deemed non-responsive as they didn't comply with the requirements in the RFP. Um, but seven were evaluated in accordance with our uh, defined evaluation criteria. Of the seven, four were shortlisted. And then those four shortlisted firms were invited to interview, after which we made a recommendation to the Operations and Development Committee uh, in early May, at the May 6th meeting. And based on uh, questions and comments from the Operations and Development Committee, uh, staff determined that the most appropriate response was to initiate a best and final offer process with the four shortlisted firms. Uh, we believe that that would address a uh, majority of the committee's comments and ultimately result in a better value for the airport. Um, that BAFO process is underway and expected to complete at the end of June. Um, but because the BAFO process will extend us past the current term of the existing agreement, uh, we come to you today requesting the extension. Um, <clears throat> so uh, based on the recommendation of the Operations and Development Committee, we are requesting the Commission approve the month-to-month -month extension for a period not to exceed three months with uh, DFS um, for the fixed monthly price of $93,132. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. I think it was at the last meeting, but I just asked that if we're going to sign an amendment that essentially adopts the provisions of a prior contract, that we have the contract in front of us, please, because there may be members of this commission that weren't here when we approved the original contract. And this is a very short amendment that just incorporates by reference the, the previous terms. So that would really be helpful to us and, the, and to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Yes, sir. Uh, I've got sort of a two-part question. Can you describe what the BAFO process is? I would testify to what you describe what the steps are in the BAFO. Uh, absolutely. And how that specifically addresses the concerns the committee had that we raised last month. Uh, sure. Um, our recommendation uh, for the award of contract at the May 6th Operation and Development Committee was to the incumbent, DFS. Uh, despite the fact that their uh, annual price was significantly higher than the other three shortlisted proposers, 
Uh, in general, the reason that recommendation was made be was because uh, they are s proposed staffing levels, uh, in our view, appropriately demonstrated an understanding of the airport's facility and growth over the period of five years. Um, three of the four proposers suggested staffing levels consistent um, or similar to what they were back in 2014, and obviously the <coughs> airport has experienced significant growth. DFS proposed significantly higher staffing levels, and with that, a significantly higher price. Um, the committee uh, pointed out that they were concerned about the uh, significant increase in cost and also um, that it was only of one of the four. They also expressed concern that it may have not been entirely communicated our expectation on additional staff. And so our BAFO process identified three criteria on which we would evaluate the four proposals, um, the four best and final offers, rather. So we're still getting offers from all four? All four, correct. Uh, we're uh, awarding based on 40 points for staffing levels, 40 points for price, and 20 points for their response to our questions. Um, and so we believe that by Increasing the score based on providing additional staff will incentivize um, the firms to compete in a way that will yield better results for the airport. Right. Does thank that you. address your? Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? No? Move approval. Um, second. It's been moved to, and seconded that we approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, sir. Moving on the, the agreements with the Verdugo fire. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Tom Linehan, Fire Chief. Uh, going along with this morning's unanimous recommendation by the Operations and Development Committee, uh, staff seeks commission approval of the following items to complete Airport Fire Department's communication system upgrades in conjunction with Verdugo Fire Communications Equipment and system upgrades to the joint fire communication system known as the Verdugo system. One, memorandum of understanding MOU with the City of Glendale in the amount of $15,182 for the authority's 16.667% share of the Phoenix G2 alerting system upgrade in the Northrop Grumman System Command Point Computer Aided Dispatch System. Two, contract with U.S. Digital Designs Incorporated, USDD, in the amount of $46,436 for the replacement of the station alerting system uh, to the Phoenix G2 system with an optional annual service agreement of $3,762 that becomes available to the authority 18 months after installation. Three, contract with Berg Electric Corporation in the amount of $31,054 for installation of the station alerting system. And finally, four, contract with Presidio Network Solutions Group, LLC, Presidio, in the amount of $58,103 for the acquisition and installation of replacement mobile data terminals, MDTs, and associated data network to support MDTs to be installed in the airport fire department vehicles. The total cost of the upgrades for the interoperability with the Verdugo system, not including the optional annual service agreement fee uh, for the station alerting equipment is $150,765. So with that, let me give you a brief uh, history uh, and, and some details. In August of 2017, the Verdugo fire communication system uh, made the decision with the approval of the Glendale City Council to upgrade their 30-year-old computer-aided dispatch system to the Northrop Grumman Compan Point computer-aided dispatch system. Now with this decision and this upgrade, it required all participating agencies within the Verdugo Fire Communication System, which the authority is one, to upgrade their station alerting systems, their mobile data, uh, their mobile data terminals, MBTs, <laughs> as well as their uh, connectivity and data point systems. Also, it required the upgrade of portable radios and uh, operations consoles here at the airport. Uh, now to get ahead of this, 
uh, in last year's budget or this year's current budget, we were able to appropriate $350,000. Uh, to this point, uh, we came to you last October and you approved upgrading our Motorola uh, 5000 radios to the Motorola 8000s as well as upgrading the operations uh, consoles. That to the approximate figure of $150,000. So we, uh, the remaining, what we have remaining in our appropriation is $191,000 and we're well within that with the cost to finish off this upgrade of these four requests that we're bringing to you this morning. Um, as far as completion, uh, the uh, subject to your approval, this project is anticipated to be completed by uh, no later than June 30th of, of this year, 2019, barring any unforeseen circumstances. But that's that that is our definitely our goal. Uh, so finally, uh, staff seeks commission approval of the proposed agreements with the City of Glendale, USDD, Berg Electric, and Presidio as described above for the upgrade to the communication equipment at the airport fire department in conjunction with the Verdugo Fire Communication Center computer-aided dispatch system upgrade and authorization for the president to execute the same. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Are there any comments or questions? There being none, do I hear a motion to approve? Um, yes. And I, I need to abstain oh. because I was on the council okay. that approved this. Okay, we have an abstention. Everybody mm -hmm. else? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And I, I left everyone uh, one of our uh, fire department challenge coins from when I presented Firefighter oh. of the Year. Uh, I Mr. thought Mr. I was the only Chief, one who got one. How come one? the commissioners oh. don't have one of these? <laughs> Thank you. Free admission okay. to their picnic. <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> item seven, items for discussion, project delivery method. <clears throat> Mr. DeFrenza, your Director of Engineering and Maintenance will be making the presentation. Good morning again, Commissioners. Um, personally, I'm very excited to have this opportunity um, to present this information. <clears throat> Today, staff intends to update the full commission and requests concurrence for proceeding with developing the framework uh, request for qualification and re request for proposal documents consistent with the progressive design build uh, project delivery method for the replacement passenger terminal. Staff discussed this item in detail uh, with the replacement passenger terminal ad hoc committee on May 10th and received direction to move this item forward for commission consideration. A little background. Um, in this context, delivery method is a term used to describe the contracting process and contracting structure by which design and construction firms uh, are selected in order to deliver the um, and facilitate the development of the replacement passenger terminal and the associated <coughs> components of the project. <coughs> Staff uh, and the authority's considerations and our uh, financial feasibility consultants uh, <clears throat> reviewed the following uh, standard delivery methods. The traditional design, bid, build, um, uh, construction manager at risk delivery method or CMAR, uh, the progressive design build method, a lump sum design build method, different iterations of public-private partnerships or P3, and then a hybrid of the different methods considering that unique methods could be assigned to unique scope elements. Each of these potential contracting methods uh, present variable levels of scope control, cost control, risk assumptions, uh, schedule expectations, etc. cetera. Um, but in, in making our determination, the pri priority considerations for us as it relates to delivering the replacement passenger terminal project were uh, the authority's ability to maintain program cost control within the established program funding parameters and uh, the ability to maintain uh, control over the defined scope and manage the design development process in coordination and with cost inputs from the designer and contractor. 
or builder rather. So on May 10th, staff and consultants gave uh, the ad hoc committee a presentation on delivery method alternatives. And based on the priorities identified above, uh, based on our understanding of the interests of the airport authority, airlines, um, other tenants, and the public, staff and consultants recommend to the committee that the progressive design build uh, delivery method be advanced. A, a few highlights on progressive design build. Under this uh, delivery method, the authority would issue a procurement for a design builder. The design builder firm would include both contracting services or construction services and civil and architectural designers. Uh, the design builder would be responsible for developing the design based on the programmatic elements and design criteria that will be defined in a program definition document to be developed by a selected program manager. The program definition document will incorporate inputs from the ongoing public charrette process, uh, ongoing air carrier coordination, uh, authority defined priorities, the development agreement, and any of the environmental requirements or considerations identified in the already completed EIR or the ongoing EIS. As the design progresses, um, the design builder firm will conduct ongoing constructability reviews and cost analysis or construction cost estimates. Those reviews will be um, coordinated with the authority staff and the selected program management firm and similarly reviewed by interested airline uh, reviewers. <clears throat> As the design develops to around the 60% level, um, <clears throat> authority will negotiate a guaranteed maximum price with the selected design builder. Those negotiations will be based on the ongoing construction cost estimates, so uh, that will help uh, eliminate any surprises. Um, <clears throat> after the GMP is finalized, the design builder is at risk for delivering the complete construction of the project for the negotiated GMP, or guaranteed maximum price which provides the authority at that time a high degree of cost certainty for the defined project scope and any changes in material or construction costs will be the responsibility and the risk of the design builder. So uh, with the recommendation of the replacement passenger terminal ad hoc committee, staff seeks concurrence from the full commission to advance under um, the progressive design build project delivery method for the replacement passenger terminal project. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any comments? No? Yes, sir. Right, yeah, thank you for the uh, elaboration. Uh, the, the two of, uh, th this is one of uh, five, or excuse me, six uh, alternatives. One of the other alternatives, the design bill, sounds pretty similar. So the key difference here is the, uh, is it the uncertainty with respect to exactly what we're going to be able to incorporate based on both operations, operational considerations and uh, uncertainty about sources of funding? A little bit. Uh, to do, the do it have to be worked out in this progressive portion? Exactly. By design build. So the biggest difference between lump sum design build and progressive design build is the timing by which the contractor guarantees the construction price. Right. And so in order for us to get a, a meaningful lump sum bid from contractors or from lump sum design builders, we would need to do a significant heavier lift currently um, in terms of defining our minimum requirements. By allowing the progressive design build model, we can work concurrently with the designer to refine um, the scope of the replacement passenger terminal program in such a way that we are uh, capitalizing on the input from the designer and the builder who will build it so we get uh, more current and relevant information but still the flexibility to coordinate. Does that yes, yes. address your concern? Right, okay, so uh, we're basically starting more activities sooner but we've got the check when it comes to the negotiation of the cost further down the line. Correct, okay. and then to avoid a concern with uh, skyrocketing costs as the design develops. Um, typically with progressive design build you establish a design to budget or um, target 
total construction cost value in the very beginning. Um, and then as the design develops every other week, you're checking in on the current construction cost estimate to make sure that it complies with that uh, design to budget number. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, the, um, I attended the ad hoc committee discussion on this. This was, as did Commissioner Wiggins, uh, we spent several hours um, on going over this in more detail. Frankly, I think it would be useful for staff to share those materials with the commission. I was a little surprised it wasn't in the package that sort of went through in more detail what the uh, rationale was and what the all offered in more detail what the distinctions were between the different approaches and why they were recommending the progressive design build uh, alternative. This is a uh, this is a big project. This is a project that's going to be in excess of a billion dollars uh, with a B. And, um, and, and so it, it um, and it's, it's one of those projects that can be fraught um, in terms of changes in scope and change orders and uh, additional unanticipated costs and, and uh, after, ha and frankly, uh, some of us, I think, at, at when we started on this discussion years ago, um, and P3 projects were all the rage and, and we thought <coughs> this might be a candidate for a uh, public-private participation approach. Um, the world has turned a couple of times and I think the staff was pretty compelling in terms of presenting um, what had happened in the world of P3s and those that were touting it having fallen by the wayside and, and the difficulties that various projects have had. But in any event, I think the staff has done a good job in sort of winnowing through these, um, these complex alternatives and coming up with a recommendation that we support um, as a way of, of getting uh, enough information um, so that the, uh, the ultimate um, builder of the project can be held accountable without asking them to um, make a commitment that they really can't live up to because there isn't enough information early enough and to incorporate uh, the design process with the build process as opposed to s having two separate uh, potentially conflicting uh, consultants um, that uh, with and the intersection of those differing opinions ultimately resulting in a higher cost. So um, the ad hoc committee does uh, did recommend this progressive design build alternative but I would suggest just for the for the commission's uh, general edification that some of that additional material be made available to the commission, but I, um, if there aren't any more questions, I would I would move the item. And I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Moving on to the legal expense reimbursement request. Mr. President, uh, we're coming to you this morning to uh, advise the uh, full commission uh, that we did meet with the legal committee um, <laughs> at, at, during our last round of meetings to uh, bring to uh, your attention that we have an, al an alleged uh, violation of uh, not paying for lunches for employees or having them work through lunch without compensation. Uh, to date, we are, are, are taking those first few steps as we look at the uh, complaint. Um, so far, we're not seeing anything that would justify that, but certainly we're in the early stages of that. Um, at this point in time, we would expect that we could expend up to $10,000 before the end of our fiscal year. Going forward into our next fiscal year, it's difficult to identify what we think that cost may be. But during the legal committee, we uh, made the commitment that we would come back to the committee on a regular basis to update them on what is happening and to discuss any additional costs that would be incurred by TBI going forward. And uh, this morning, we're asking for uh, approval of the commission uh, for the $10,000 that would carry us through the end of this fiscal year and then as I said we'll be coming back to you next fiscal year as needed and in consultation with the legal committee. Thank you. Any comments? All those in favor? This is a motion. This needs to be a motion first. Oh. Yeah, and I'll move the item. Thank you, sir. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We have a closed session? Yes, we do, sir. Okay, let's adjourn for a closed session then.
Uh, at this time, I'd like to call on council to bring us an update on one of the conversations in the meeting. Yes, thank you. The commission met in closed session um, for the one item listed. There is no reportable action, but I will note that the commission is very aware of the concerns expressed by the public this morning and at prior meetings related to noise issues and that staff is working on um, a presentation and some action items, well not action, excuse me, not action items, but um, an item to come back to report to the commission on direction that staff is taking um, and that will be a public discussion item at the next meeting. Thank you. Are there any other comments or suggestions? At this time, I'll entertain a meeting to adjourn. Well, comments? Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, uh, last Wednesday, we had the final meeting here at the airport. Uh, in fact, it was right in this room here of the uh, <coughs> Aviation Academy. Uh, the students from the high schools in the three cities uh, uh, who attended the, I guess, previous five uh, uh, meetings out here at the airport to uh, learn about aviation, learn about uh, career opportunities and that sort of thing. Uh, they were all here and uh, uh, we also had speakers from the uh, LA USD North Valley Vocational Center. Uh, we had a uh, professor from uh, Cal State University Los Angeles which has a very extensive aviation program. We had a representative from uh, Glendale Community College, which has an aviation program. We had uh, a <coughs> representative from uh, Mount SAC. They have a very extensive uh, aviation program. And uh, uh, the students got an awful lot of really good input. And uh, uh, I express my appreciation for them having an interest in aviation in the program and uh, urged them to, you know, continue, uh, you know, with their enthusiastic pursuit of uh, trying to figure out whether or not this is uh, going to be a career path they want to follow. And Lucy might be able to make some more, give us some more information at another uh, follow-up meeting. But uh, it all went very well and the pizza was uh, entirely consumed at the end of the meeting. Uh, we had a sort of a pizza lunch for them. That's always a good way to get them to show up. Thank you, Thank you very much. Any other comments? This time I'll entertain a, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you all very much.